What's up, EDS crew? Got ourselves a big job today. Uh, wasn't gonna work Saturday, but uh, had somebody call and request it. And so I decided to, you know, go ahead and go with it. And I'm glad I did. So this right here is, is food coloring. Um, she showed me it's a, um, don't remember the name of the product. So we'll see if I can get that to come out. She didn't specify how long it's been there. But the color may stick. I'm gonna try a couple different things. See if I can work that out. So we're doing carpet and tile and two area rugs, uh, all up in the area rugs and the garage. I got Preston with me today helping out. So what we're doing is I have him hooked up and he's pre-spraying over here and in that room. He's already vacuumed and that room and then there's a bedroom on the other side of the tile in the kitchen. So I have him doing that. So while I was setting him up to pre-spray, he was vacuuming and now I'm vacuuming my areas. So we're splitting this up. My machine is capable of dual wanding. So we're going to do that for the carpet. And then that way, by the time I'm probably done with the master bedroom and the stairs, I think I'm going to move these. Let's see if there's maybe somewhere we could put these. put these in the kitchen for now or out in the garage in a moment so I did a quick test clean of their tile major difference wanted to see if there was any coatings on the tile because that would mean I'd need to strip the floor and in my opinion not my favorite thing to do or have on a floor is some kind of acrylic or something like that so I always test clean before I start because I don't want to walk into a disaster. So I'm just going to stick these here for now until I'm done vacuuming with you guys. But, well, there's that orange stuff. So some of it did come out of the carpet. Some of it's not dried into it. So it was a powder. So maybe I will get it out. Um, I've never seen that product before, it was, uh, I don't recall the name of it, it was in a small little bottle that she showed me. So, I'm going to use what I got to work it out of the carpet, but if it's vacuuming up, that has me feeling good about it. Yep, yep, looks like I've ran out of cord here. This is a 30 foot length carpeted room. So I'll just come over here and work on this side and I'll run over this a couple more times before I wet it down. See if I can get any more out of it. There we go. A couple more passes doesn't hurt on that. So this is a little over 1,100 square feet of carpet, 16 steps. You're not doing all of the carpet, surprisingly, so that's a fair amount. Check something. 
sounded like. Oh, sorry, it sounded like the little filter in there was was clogged. Which means I would have lost my suction power. I guess I was mistaken. Cable here. This is going to be a hot one today, guys. It is July 11th, 2020, and I believe it's supposed to be 100 plus where I'm at. Got this light beaming down on me. Yesterday's jobs, which you saw before this, I barely got any content. It was such a busy day. I just could not get much video of anything. So that's why those were so short. But we got a little bit more time today. I still have another job after this, but this is a relatively open job. As you can see, there's nothing in here. Um, I got pressed in here working on two rooms of carpet. I'm going to go upstairs after this, do the master bedroom. We're doing a little bit of a pathway that leads to the master bedroom um, and then the stairs. And then after I'm done with the carpets, I'll be doing this entry of tile and then the kitchen tile. And then uh, lastly, we'll finish out two area rugs in the um, in the garage. They have two synthetic area rugs that she wants clean that were on top of these carpets. One in here, as you can kind of see this outline, and then one in the uh, other family room. So something to think about if you have that set up, you've never had them professionally clean, just one thing you gotta know is just to be extra safe, I always instruct my clients to leave them off the carpet until the following morning at least, just so you don't risk trapping any moisture in and causing future problems. So. There. I told them they can bring one in and place it on the kitchen tile, but uh, it needs to, needs to wait probably about four hours. So that way the tile and grout can dry completely. More so the grout, because we're sealing the grout today. very dirty there's some loose carpet mainly upstairs so again with loose carpet if you're having your carpet professionally cleaned just keep in mind that there's always a chance that it will um, it'll flare up because of it tends to expand a little bit when it's damp but when it dries it goes back to its normal state so if you have that situation 
the only way you're going to permanently get rid of it is by having the carpet stretched. So it's something to consider if you happen to have some loose areas in the carpet, have it professionally stretched, and then you'll be back to normal. All right, guys, I'm going to do these stairs and then keep this going. So here's the ripples in the carpet that I was talking about. this a little bit, move it into the bathroom area and have air blow out into the carpeted area. those who are cleaners uh, right now I do not offer stretch work if you are wondering why I didn't take that upon myself for this job um, the reason being is because I want to go eventually maybe one day if I'm able to take a class on how to do it properly um, I've been on some stretch jobs at my previous place of employment, but um, yeah, I eventually maybe one day I'll get trained and then incorporate that into my business, but for right now, I'm going to stick with the cleaning side of things, and then um, any service that I don't have experience with. I usually have somebody to refer them to, but this is one of the few things I don't have a connection. I just made a connection with a flooring company, so I didn't get a chance to ask him if he did stretch work for carpet, or if he just does installs. He doesn't put himself out there as he's stretching carpet, so I'll have to give him a call and ask. I mean, he took a bunch of my cards so we can network with each other. And you as a business owner, small business owner in my area. So it's always good to link up with like-minded individuals and help each other out. Very minimal furniture in this house right now, but we are just going around it per her instructions. Small items, so not a big deal. Barely got to the wall, almost ran out of cable right there. So, all I got left is just to move this fan. So, what I'm gonna wanna do is just set it here in the bathroom and get it plugged in. And then once, once I'm done in here, 
we'll uh, be able to open that window with one hand. It's got two old locks on it. Okay, let's finish this up real quick and then I'll do that. Guys, CRB. I gotta back my way into this so I don't run over the cable. Like I said, we're only doing uh, this section here, leading into the master. So, for request, I think this air upstairs that really gets that much use, so she's not too concerned about it. So I'm just doing this square here that leads into the master.
All right, BDS crew, I got something new to show you guys. Well, it'll look similar, but just something will stand out about it. Brand new wand. So, this is the TMF limited edition wand. Looks very similar to the other one. It's just things have been upgraded on it. So there's um, more stainless steel Got the temperature gauge as like the last one. There's higher grade parts on this one. Still does the same thing. It's just the higher grade parts are gonna last me longer. And this swivel, I mean, ooh, it moves so nice and easy. Literally the first time I'm using it. And I think the head of the carpet one here is a little different. Just a little bit than my other one so what this is allowing me to do now is Preston is downstairs cleaning carpet and I'm upstairs cleaning carpet got my machine turned on high still got still got good suction from what it sounds like and now we're able to divide and conquer I mean, I was able to before, but the one that came with my carpet machine, I am not too fond of. It's, ever since I got a swiveling wand, I felt so spoiled. And just didn't use it because I didn't really have enough jobs coming through that dictated having two nice swivel wands like this, but I'm at that point where it was necessary so I literally got it in the mail yesterday super stoked about it this thing just moves so easy This is a custom one, they do make them to order. Uh, there's different colors, obviously I have a black one too. But there's red in my colors. I got black and red um, as my colors. And there is a little bit of gray as well on my van. So what I was thinking from here on out is doing red wands and then maybe getting the uh, vacuum lines red too. So this is going to make me really stand out at a client's house. They're going to see that bright wand. And if I can find them, the red backing lines. So, you know, after a visit, you'll see all these bright red colors. They're going to know. And uh, remember me probably better too. So I thought it was a good idea. I'm digging it, I like the red. And then also another little feature, this little clip right on top, where it's, see where it's swiveling? If you push that in right there, it'll lock it in place. So if you don't want it to swivel for a reason, you can turn basically the swivel feature off and go back to normal straight wanding. So I thought that was a nice addition. I rarely, actually I don't think I've ever locked it in place on my other wand. So I don't think I'll ever do that, but for instance, if you're putting it in your van, or whatever setup you have, and uh, it's hanging there and you don't want the, the head to flop around, you can just lock it.
carpet's not in bad shape. Literally that stain downstairs that you saw when I was vacuuming is the only thing. Sweat coming down my my nose. So I'm watching the sight glass too to see what else coming through, and this carpet isn't bad. She said she had it done a year ago. So when I asked her, I was just curious. And do you mind me asking why you're not having a same company out and she she couldn't remember the name of them so she googled us yesterday and called me so I gotta say I'm kind of thankful she forgotten the last company I mean it stinks in a way because I'm like wondering like why why wouldn't they leave their a business card or, or something um, to remind her, you know, that they cleaned for her last time. So again, going back to this wand, you know, she sees me using this wand, she sees my my safety door in the front door, or, you know, obviously you want to try and do your best and have great customer service, do, do good work, and then, uh, that way it's hard for her to forget you. Because that made the previous company lose out on doing this job again. You know, I don't know if they did the title last time. At least she said they did. So, it's a big job. Over a thousand square feet of carpeting and a little under 400 square feet of tile. We're so just in the kitchen area on the entry tile. There's still more in the house. There's still more carpet in the house. So that's why I find it important to have a vehicle wrap that stands out. Um, I even had that flooring guy that I hooked up with tell me that. Um, have marketing materials, a card, you know, a, I have another card that's got a picture of my family on it and, you know, $25 off for new clients as a thank you for giving us the opportunity. So, everybody that I have serviced in the past, I think, year and a half, year, about a year, year and a half, I've received one of those, or if I didn't have one on hand, I gave them the $25 off on Scotch Bar, deodorizer, sealer, or if they were doing our house cleaning department, $25 off on a deep plane. So, that's pretty much it for now. Preston already did half of this room. So, 
so I'm just starting finishing up where he left off. Then we're going to start on the tile. There was a stain over there, if you remember it, that came out, so that's good news. Be able to tell the client that she doesn't have to worry about that spot anymore. So whatever that uh, food coloring thing was, it must have not have been there that long because it came out pretty easy or it's just not one that's uh, permanent, which is great. Sometimes it can become permanent though if you use some random cleaner on it. So you do have to be careful. See that little thing, whatever that is there? Let me grab that. Right there. There you go. Too much traffic.
So now after I clean this, sometimes I'll go around in detail, do some other things um, if it needs it, do some, do an acid cleaner and then re-rinse. So I just wanted to show you how the entry was going to clean up. And then I still got a little bit more to do. Alright guys, so this is the second step. So remember when you were looking back here just a minute ago, how it still looked like there was something in the grout. So I ended up doing an acid rinse and got it. There's just some some bad grout right here. You can feel a texture difference when you run your finger over these areas. But otherwise, going over it with the acid rinse made a big difference. Master, you really don't have to do a lot of actually you don't have to do any scrubbing really um, I just thought I'd give you guys some CRB time on the tile so you could see what it does already just by running over it after it's been put grout master down but that entryway I did zero scrubbing on that that was just straight grout master that took off the top like you see right here and then there was a little bit of something left behind. Um, so I used an acid to neutralize and extract the rest of it out. So that made a huge difference. Sometimes you just gotta take the extra step. Not always though, Grout Master a lot of times will take care of the entire floor. But um, if there's something that's lingering behind, uh, then you would be doing light acid cleaner and then pressure rinsing it back again and that will take care of the rest of it but usually about 90 percent of the jobs or more grout master will get it clean all by itself so if you let it dwell long enough you don't really need a crv um, i like to do it just in this case so you guys can see it but also if you got a tile that's got a lot of pits, um, such as like, um, there's a man-made tile that's made to look like travertine, and of course travertine itself being very textured and pitted, then you can run the CRV over it, just for a little extra of something. But it's not always necessary, but it's nice to do on occasion just to accelerate the grout master and then the rinsing should be a little bit easier. But as you can see, all that dirt that came off from the CRB pushing it out of the grout lines. 
tell it's all dark everywhere where we haven't touched. And then you get over here where he started CRB and there's a difference already. Some kick out that made it made it out from left over from the carpet because we didn't clean the brushes out quite yet because we still had this to do, so we'll vacuum all that up. Obviously not gonna leave that behind, but So that's pretty much it. We'll do the rinsing step next. Then dry this out. Then we gotta seal the grout. And then we will be just about done. Just gonna double check and make sure the client doesn't want Scotch Guard on the carpet. Otherwise, we'll be all set. too if you're going to be doing an acid rinse is there's stainless steel appliances in here if you're going to do an acid cleaner you got to wrap them with, with something to protect them so if it turns out I need to do an acid cleaner in here I'm going to use some painters tape and drape and wrap them up from the bottom up to protect them Stainless steel, they do still stain or have issues. So that'll be my next step if I need to go down that position.
All right, guys. So this is the finished. Just needs to put seal on it. As you can see, no longer dark grout lines. It's actually kind of white. So just gotta put sealer on it and then wipe it down. And that will be it.